Hi, this is Mrs. Savanas, and I am reading Chapter 6 of Humphrey According, Mysteries According to Humphrey. The Chapter 6 is The Case of the Baffling Ballerina. In the car, Mrs. Kirkpatrick wanted to hear about how Simon and Kelsey bumped heads, but Kelsey just wanted to talk about me. I can't believe it, she said. I wanted to bring Humphrey home since the first day of school. That made me feel very nice, but thinking about what Mrs. Burspain had said still made me feel not so nice. This all came from the because of Humphrey. What on earth had I done to her? Anyway, how could I undo it? Kelsey's house was white with bright orange shutters around the windows that reminded me of Kelsey's hair and her mom's. Her big brother Kevin was already home from school and he was very tall and his hair was darker than Kelsey's. What's that, he said, pointing at me. Humphrey, Kelsey answered, our classroom hamster. Oh, Kevin answered. Mom, what's there to eat? I'm so hungry I could eat anything in sight. I was glad I was hidden. All those yummy treats in my cheek pouch, and I did not want to share them, because I was sure I would be fed again. Kevin and his mom went to the kitchen where Kelsey took my cage to her room. Humphrey, you're the cutest hamster I have ever seen, she told me. Thanks, I squeaked, and you're one of the nicest girls. Before I could finish my sentence, I looked at Kelsey. She was nice, but the skin around one of her eyes had turned a bright shade of purple with streaks of green and black. Eek, I squeaked. Luckily, Kelsey just giggled. That was one time I was happy a human couldn't understand my squeak. I would never want to hurt a friend's feelings. Kelsey made sure that everything in my cage was in order, and then her mom came in to check on us. Oh, Kelsey, look at your eye, her mother said. I'm afraid it looks a lot worse before it's going to go away. Kelsey raced to the mirror and looked at herself. Oddly enough, she smiled. I'll probably be the only girl at Longfellow School with a black eye, she said. Probably the only person. Kelsey's mom bit her lip and looked at the, one, the eye again. I guess they don't need to take you to the doctor. The nurse did say it was fine. Kelsey assured her mother that she was all right. I hope you can go to the ballet lesson tomorrow, Kelsey's mom said. I'd hate for you to miss the very first one. At the mention of the word ballet, Kelsey suddenly looked unsqueakably unhappy. She reached up and touched her purple eye. It does hurt a little, she said. Mrs. Kirkpatrick shook her head. Oh, poor Kelsey. Tell me again how it happened. That boy Simon ran into you? Kelsey nodded. But there was more to the story than that, and I knew it. You ran into each other, I squeaked. You were just standing there, Kelsey's mom asked. Kelsey squinched up her face and thought for a minute. No, I was running up to the board to answer a question. We both were running up to the board. Ah, said Mrs. Kirkpatrick. So you bumped into each other. Yes, 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 I squeaked. I think I'll call Simon's mother to see how he is, Kelsey's mom said. Oh, he's fine, Mom, Kelsey said, rolling her eyes. It's no big deal. But Kelsey's mom had left the room already. A little while later, Kevin wandered into Kelsey's room. He was eating a large and yummy-looking sandwich. What's up with your eye, he asked. A boy ran into me, Kelsey said. Kevin stared at her eye. Wow, that's going to be an amazing shiner. Clumsy. I mean, Kelsey. How rude, I squeaked loudly. Clumsy Kelsey wasn't always careful, but I didn't think she was clumsy. But what on earth was a shiner? Another mystery word. Bird brain, Kelsey muttered. Kevin just chuckled and wandered out again. I was glad he was gone. Once we were alone, Kelsey flopped down on the bag. That's why I am Humphrey. Clumsy Kelsey. Like, that's why I am Humphrey. Clumsy Kelsey like Kevin said. I climbed up to the side of my cage and looked right at Kelsey. That's the silliest thing I ever heard, I told her. I am, Kelsey said. I'm always running into things and I'm always getting bumped and bruised. Because you aren't careful, I explained. That's what we said. your teacher said. You need to take your time. Mom thinks ballet will make me more graceful, she said, but I think it will make me more clumsy. I knew ballet was some kind of dancing. In her note, Mrs. Burspain had said that she was going to a dancing soon. Maybe she was learning ballet. 
Did she think it would make her more graceful? What's so great about twirling around on your toes, she said. I thought about it. Twirling was kind of like spinning on a wheel, which is something I really like, like, like to do. And I use my toes for all kinds of things, from climbing on my cage to grooming myself. Sounds great, I said. Kelsey got off the bed and looked at the mirror and smiled. It is a great shiner, she said. But whoever heard of a ballerina with a black eye? I don't know, I squeaked. I've never actually seen a ballerina. Kelsey walked over to the dresser and picked up a pink box. Here, Humphrey, I'll show you, she said. Sometimes I wonder if humans really can understand me. After setting the box next to my cage, Kelsey opened the lid and I saw this amazing thing. It was a tiny dancer, smaller than me, in front of a small mirror. Tinkling music began to play as the ballerina twirled around. The ballerina was all in pink with a pink short skirt and she danced right up on her tippy toes. I was spellbound as I watched her go around and around again and again. See, that's a ballerina, Kelsey said. She never trips and falls, and she never gets a black eye. I was disappointed when she suddenly slammed down the lid of the box. The ballerina disappeared from the view, and the music stopped playing. I could never be graceful like her, Kelsey said. Watch. Kelsey started spinning around the room. I have to admit, she didn't exactly look like the twirling ballerina. While the tiny dancer twirled in one place, Kelsey lurched around wildly until I was afraid she was going to stumble right into my cage. She didn't. Instead, she wobbled and fell backwards, landing on her tail. Well, if humans had tails. Ouch, she said. Eek, I squeaked. Just then, Simon raced into this room. His mom and Kelsey's mom his mom and Kelsey's mom were right behind him. Hi, Kelsey, he said. My mom wanted to see your eye. Kelsey, what are you doing on the floor? Kelsey got up and rubbed her rear end, practicing ballet, she said. Simon walked up to Kelsey and looked closely at her eye. Wow, that's amazing. Does it hurt, asked Mrs. Morgenstern. Not really, Kelsey answered. She pointed at the side of Simon's head. Hey, you've got a bump. Simon rubbed his head. Gee, I'd rather have a shiner. So a shiner must be a bruised eye. He turned and saw me. Hi, Humphrey. Look at my bump. Eek, I squeaked. But Simon didn't seem to mind. We thought if we all went out for ice cream, you might forget about your injuries for a while, said Mrs. Kirkpatrick. Kelsey and Simon seemed happy and didn't even remember to say goodbye to me when they all left the room. When I was alone, I thought about the twirling ballerina. I can spin on my hamster wheel or in a hamster ball, but twirling looked like fun. I stood up and tried to twirl, but I tumbled head over toes instead. Somersaults are fun unless you aren't planning on one. I got up and tried again, and this time I managed to twirl around once, but something was missing, the music. I knew they would take my friends a while to go get ice cream, so I jiggled my lock, the one that doesn't lock, and pushed on it. And once I was out of my cage, I hurried over to the pink box. I could barely reach the lid, and the first time I pushed the lid, it popped up and crashed right back down. But even standing on my tippy toes, I wasn't tall enough to open it. However, I don't give up easily, so I scurried over to this side of the box near the hinge, and finally I pushed with all my might and the lid swung open. Whew, that lid was heavy. The music began to play and I raced to the front of the box to watch the pretty little ballerina go around and around. Kelsey was right, the ballerina was graceful. I watched her whirl and twirl until I felt a little dizzy. Then I raised myself up and tried twirling again. I stood up, up, up on my toes and spun myself around in a circle. Then I made another circle, and another. I was twirling and not falling over. I wish Kelsey could see me. If a furry little hamster could learn to twirl around gracefully, I knew she could too. Although I was unhappy leaving room 26, I had hoped that Mrs. Bursbane had enjoyed dancing as much as I was. My twirling was interrupted, though, by a loud bang and footsteps. Kelsey and Simon were back. 
I raced back to my cage and pulled the door behind me. The ballerina was still dancing and the music was still playing. Humphrey, we brought you a strawberry, Kelsey shouted as she raced into the room. Simon was right behind her. Where's the music coming from, he asked. Oh, my music box, Kelsey said. That's funny. It was closed when I left. Simon laughed. Maybe Humphrey opened it. That made Kelsey laugh. Sure, it was Humphrey. With the music still going, it was my chance to show Kelsey that anyone can learn to twirl, even a hamster. I got up on my toes and spun around again and again. Look, Humphrey's dancing, Simon pointed at me. Kelsey leaned down to watch. He makes it look so easy, she said. They giggled, of course. The music was getting slower and slower, and so was I. Can you make it do it again, Simon asked. Kelsey closed the lid and then opened it again, and the music was back to the same speed, and the ballerina was spinning. Let's do a Humphrey dance, Simon said. He started twirling around the room and laughing. Kelsey chuckled and started twirling around too. The trick is to pick one place to look at, Simon said, and each time you spin around, look at that spot. He was a pretty good twirler. Hey, it works, Kelsey admitted. She wasn't staggering. She wasn't stumbling. She was just spinning. The music slowed down again, and we all stopped dancing. That reminds me, I have to start ballet lessons tomorrow, Kelsey said. I don't see how I'll ever dance on my toes. Ah, uh, my sister takes ballet. You don't start off on your toes. You start off with the simple stuff, he said. Slow down Simon's sister was stop giggling Gail, and she had been in Mrs. Brisbane's class last year. I knew she was a great laugher, and I didn't know that she took ballet lessons, too. She does? Really? said Kelsey. Really? said Simon. Let's watch Humphrey dance again, he said. So I danced and danced and danced some more until finally it was time for Simon to go home. Before she went to bed that night, Kelsey watched the music box ballerina again for a while. It would be nice to have a pretty pink tutu like that, she said. Maybe I'd like ballet after that. A tutu? I was pie until I realized she was talking about the dress. Well, I liked ballet, but there was no way I was going to wear a pink tutu, ever. I guess Kelsey read my mind because she said, of course, boy ballet dancers don't dress like that. They wear tights. They don't dance up on their toes either, but they lift the girl dancers way up in the air. Whew, I was relieved to learn that. Kelsey slept well that night, and even though I'm usually awake for some of the night, I slept unsqueakably well too. I guess it was all that twirling. On Saturday afternoon, Kelsey left for dance class. I crossed my toes and hoped that she would enjoy her first lesson. While she was gone, I couldn't resist leaving my cage to watch the tiny ballerina again. I made sure I was back in my cage long before Kelsey got back. Humphrey, Humphrey, she shouted. Wait until I show you. She stood in front of my cage and noticed that the music box was open. I closed that when I left, she said. Maybe there's something wrong with the lid. I didn't squeak one word. Anyways, I want to show you what I learned at ballet class, she said. Good, 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 I replied. She pointed at her shiny pink shoes. These are my ballet slippers, she said. Next, she showed me five positions for the feet. And then she did some graceful dipping moves. It was so much fun, Humphrey, and I can be graceful. I just have to pay attention to what I'm doing. That's what our teacher to told me, Kelsey explained. At the end of the class, we got to dance around the room with scarves, and it was beautiful. The next day, Kelsey's eye was a rainbow of colors, but it didn't seem to bother her much. She spent a long time practicing the five positions in ballet. I practiced too, but I guess a hamster's, hamster's feet work a little differently than human feet. The first three positions weren't too bad, but the fourth and the fifth, well, let's just say I'm going to have to practice a whole lot more and pay attention to what I'm doing. Humphrey's Dictionary, Detective Neri. I don't know if Sherlock Holmes ever tried ballet dancing, but he should because it's fun, fun, fun. That is the end of chapter six. Thank you.